reality is that it is your marriage but it is somewhat their wedding okay and Hi guys, my name is Andy Samujapilo and welcome to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I really, really appreciate you. And if it is your first time here, I hope you find this video insightful and that you decide to check out my other content as well. We speak about all things related to money and adulting in general over here. So if you end up enjoying the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so. So today, guys, we are speaking about a very important element of this wedding planning and this becoming process, and that is managing family expectations, uh, managing other people's expectations, even if they are not family, and just managing relationships in general during this period. How do you best navigate this? What are some of the things that you can do to make sure that you stay out of trouble, you keep your spouse out of trouble, and that there is as much peace and sanity as possible, especially for yourself during this period, because it should be exciting, okay? You should be happy, you should be excited, and all of these emotions, but sometimes there is stress. In fact, most times there, there, there is a stress element, there is a being sad, disappointed, and all of those things because of all the commotion and the high pressure that is going on. So today we are speaking about how can you manage this? And I've got five tips, okay? And before I start with my five tips, let me just let you guys know that most of these tips were actually taken from people that I know who love and support me who have been through this road, okay? So thank you so much to um, everyone who contributed towards me navigating my journey as stress, uh, well, not stress-free entirely. I mean, there will be stress, but it was less stress because of these pieces of advice that I've received and also, you know, what I, how I chose to approach my situation. So I've bundled this up into five, yes, five, into five tips that you can use and apply in your journey, either now or when it does come, to just make sure you manage those relationships a bit better the first tip which is something that i uh, heard very earlier on is you need to choose your three non-negotiables okay make sure that you choose three things that are non-negotiable between you and your spouse and that no matter what you will not budge if people want to change these three things and you will stand by them as a couple and that is why it's important to choose them together okay so we're going to choose three priorities that no matter who says what you are not changing these things okay you will not budge and this is something that the both of you have agreed on so these can be different examples i'll let you know what i chose but i usually like to keep them at three and not more than that and the reason for that is guys the reality is that it is your marriage but it is somewhat their wedding okay and there is some element of truth to that so you want to make sure that you involve your family and you make sure that they're also there i mean they want to support you they want to contribute and all of those nice things so don't choose 20 things that you won't negotiate on because then you're going to give yourself stress so we chose three and i'll tell you what our three were the first one was the date of the wedding okay so we had decided that we are getting married on that specific date this year and during that time there were still lockdown restrictions to some level but we decided that we will not change our wedding date if it means getting married with 10 people then we will do that because we've got a timeline and we've got goals and we've got plans and this needs to be out of the way you know not in a bad way but we had a time um, frame and we had plans so we decided that we want to get married in on that date in that month and you know some people are like no wait for december when things are eased up a bit wait for this wait for that but we will not budge so that's one of our non-negotiables. The second one was the type of wedding that we wanted. So we had a very non-traditional type of wedding in the sense that we didn't have bridesmaids, we didn't have groomsmen. Um, you know, there were some elements of our wedding that were not normal, but it was what we wanted. So we did not negotiate on the type of wedding that we wanted. It's something that we had spoken about, something that we were both happy with and something that we were not willing to compromise on. The third thing that was a non-negotiable for us was the budget. We were dead set on spending that specific amount of money on the wedding and we were not going to spend more for, or more than that. Now, why this is so important is because all the decisions and the things that you choose for your wedding 
will ultimately have a rand value and when people bring ideas and thoughts and how they would like your perfect day to look those things have rand values so if you don't have a budget as a non-negotiable you're going to find yourself spending double or more than what you had anticipated to spend so for us we were willing to compromise and swap things around but how much we spend on the entire day was non-negotiable. If you wanted something that super exceeded our budget and it was a family member or someone who was close to us, then you were more willing to, you were more than willing to gift us with that. But we were not going to go way above, above our budget just because of, you know, something that came up or something that was introduced. So those three things were non-negotiables for us. I feel like a budget should be a non-negotiable for everyone you know unless you have an unlimited amount of money to spend on your wedding then obviously you're very lucky and you're one of the very few in the world but if you have an unlimited amount of money then obviously a budget is not a problem but if you do uh, you know have a certain amount of money then definitely think about the budget being one of your non-negotiables so that's tip number one tip number two is you need to find ambassadors okay this is very very important you can't do everything yourself and although you would like to i know i love multitasking and i tend to take on more than i can actually do practically but the reality is that you can't be in all these places at once you can't execute on all these plans on your own so up front you need reliable people that you can trust um, you know, to execute some of the plans with you, to accompany you, to support you, to even take full responsibility of some elements, because there's a lot going on um, during that period. So you want to make sure that you find ambassadors, people that you trust and love who will form part of your core team. I had one of the best ever, and I'm so grateful for them. So if any of the people who are part of my big day are watching this video, thank you so much. I will honestly forever be eternally grateful for the support that I received. But the secret now in finding ambassadors is, is make sure that you find ambassadors on the other side. So that is your in-laws, right? Especially for the females, because you are usually super involved in the planning period. If you want less stress, if you want less anxiety over what's going on, make sure that you have ambassadors on your um, um, husband-to-be's side of the family. That was a great weight lift for me, especially because I was getting married in Limpopo and I'm from Eastern Cape and my family was there and I'm in Johannesburg. So I needed as many hands on deck to make my day a success as possible. And having my husband's side of the family fully support me and avail themselves with their time, their everything for making my day special was super, super, super helpful. So make sure that you do that because that that manages conflict quite a lot, right? Because if you have people who are your voice, um, you know, and who are your reason on that side, actually standing with you as part of your team, you'll have to fight less because they actually doing the fighting for you on the other side because they care about what's important to you because you have involved them in the process. So I know it's not everyone who has a relationship with their in-laws and sometimes you want to have a relationship, but things are difficult. But if you can help it, at least for the day, make sure that you know at least two or three people on that side of the family who are going to help you execute on your plans, more especially if you are getting married on that side. It's super valuable, guys, and it really helps um, with conflict management if they also know what's going on and they are part of it. The third tip for me that I received from um, a conversation that I had with my uncle during my time was mind blowing. And um, basically we were speaking about something and he said that you need to understand the difference between culture and tradition. So I was like, huh? And then he's like, you need to understand the difference between what is your culture, what is expected from you culturally culturally versus what do people expect because they are used to or because it's a tradition they built up because it's something they saw in another family and that they liked this is really really helpful ask the right questions and make sure you understand what your cultural expectations are versus family traditions because that's going to help you have a leg to stand on when there are certain things that you are not comfortable doing or there are certain things that are too expensive or out of budget and all of those other things. Guys, this is key and it comes from speaking to family members, understanding everything that you do, every element of it, um, you know, what is involved in it and why is it important? Is it something that is your culture or is it something that is a nice to have? And if you are on a budget, this is going to be pivotal to making sure that you stay within those means because, you know, 
people like certain things for you you know and they will suggest things and you know it may be positioned as a cultural requirement but it's actually not it's actually just a nice to have that you can do without if you are within a budget so make sure that you understand the difference you know the difference so that you can do away with the things that you don't think are necessary and that are not necessary according to your family and then save some bucks doing that because sometimes you can find that your cultural expectations are equal to 60,000 Rand only to find the 30,000 Rand from there are actually just nice to have and not things that you really need to do, especially if you don't have the money to do so. Tip number four is pray, pray, pray. So when I was growing up, I was told um, very often, or rather maybe I wasn't told, but I was eavesdropping on conversations. But people used to say that, you know, coming up to a wedding or a marriage or something like that, a lot of bad things happen. A lot of conflict arises. A lot of things just center around that specific moment. Guys, this is so true. Um, and you know, you can let me know in the comment section if you have experienced things like this. But it's so true. And I think that for me, it was so important for me to have a center. And my center as a Christian is God. But prayer was pivotal in managing my sanity and where I am with the planning and, you know, all of the expectations and the pressure, be it financial, emotional, physical, time, all of those things. I really, really found solace in having a center that I go to and that I just find peace in, okay? For me and my husband, that is God, because we both believe strongly in prayer. So make sure that you are, if you do believe in prayer, praying more than you have ever done so before. Um, you know, pray against conflict, pray against disagreement, pray against all these things that seem to just come up to ruin your special day. It is so important that you pray individually, that you pray together as a couple, that you have family and friends also praying, you know, um, for you and with you for your union and your special day. That for me was so important. And obviously, if you are not Christian or you do not believe in God, then find something else like meditation or reading or whatever it is that you can just find as a center to just go to, you know, and step away from everything that's happening. It's going to be so important in just keeping you calm and keeping you able to manage those relationships and everything that is going on from a tension perspective um, that you are facing at that moment. The last tip, guys, is choose your battles wisely. There are so many things that are going to be involved in this process. There are so many relationships, so many people. This is probably the first thing that you and your partner are doing together that is of this magnitude and this importance and this and that involves so many people. It is probably the first time that you will find yourself working with your in-laws on this project of a wedding because it is like a project. So make sure that you choose your battles wisely. Not everything is worth fighting over. Not everything is worth arguing about. And this is something that I told myself. There are certain things that I just let go. If it was something that was out of um, you know, the bounds of my three non-negotiables, I strongly thought about just letting it go. And I did let go a lot of things and they didn't break my day. In fact, they helped me build bonds and relationships with my family and his family that will last forever. So just make sure that you don't lose relationships. You don't burn bridges. You don't allow, you know, conflict and disagreement in certain areas that are not that important. Obviously, there's certain things that are super important to you that you want to manage, focus on and deal with and also not um, you know, negotiate about. But there are certain things and there are many things that you can just let go, you know, the little and the small things. Sometimes people giving you those suggestions and ideas is their way of partaking on your special day. So you never want to rob them of that, okay, because it is a family way. At, at the end of the day and everybody wants to be involved and as long as uh, relationships are maintained with respect with trust and with understanding of where people stand make sure that you keep those elements in mind and that you stay calm because you need those relationships beyond your special day you still need to live with your partner so make sure that you two are not bickering and being in conflict and now not trusting each other because of things that are happening around the wedding, make sure that you protect that space, that special space, and you keep the fact that it is about the two of you, it is about the end goal. I can go on and on about this point, but the point is that what really, really helped me manage conflict and keep sane and really enjoy this period is the fact that I told myself that beyond this weekend, 
we will decide how we run our family we will decide how we run our household we will decide what we do and when we do so for this specific weekend let us just be calm and let us allow you know other people to be involved on our special day because they want to support us they want to be a part of this day they also want to be involved as much as possible so just think beyond this day alone and make sure that you're not fighting every single small detail that you can let go for the benefit of maintaining a good relationship relationship with someone else. So guys, those are my five tips for how you can best handle this high tension, high pressure, you know, time sensitive uh, period in your life when you are wedding planning. I hope you found this video insightful. If you did, please don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up and do consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't so I can see you in the next one. Bye!